Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with ericstrains.com. Today we're going to look at three great O-Scale items from Lionel. Up first, we're going to check out the legacy-equipped Burlington Northern SD60, and then after that, we'll take a look at the command-control-equipped Burlington Northern Crane and Boom Cars. All three of these items were featured in Lionel's 2010 Volume 1 catalog, and they were all featured on the same page of the catalog, page 42. But I want to point out that this is not a set. These were all separate sale items. So if you want to get these things, you have to buy the SD60, the Crane Car, and the Boom Car, all as separate sale items. This is not a set. But they go so well together that that's why I decided to review them at the same time. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to set aside the crane and boom cars for a few minutes and focus on the SD60 first. I'm going to summarize the SD60 by saying that it's a typical line on Legacy Diesel. So for those of you who may own other Legacy Diesels like the SD70s or the AC6000s, you can expect the same level of performance out of this engine. And by that I mean that it has nice features, is nicely detailed, runs great, and sounds phenomenal. Even though the SD60 may look different from the Lionel SD70s or AC6000s, under the hood they're all pretty much the same. You've got two flywheel motors, the Legacy Command System and Rail Sounds 5 on the inside. You've also got an operating smoke unit. On each truck, you've got six wheels. The inner four wheels are drive wheels, and this set of wheels just spins freely. You've got traction tires on the most inner set of wheels, and you've got two pickup rollers on each truck for nice solid electrical contact. Now while I'm talking about the trucks, let me show you a really neat feature that's on most modern Lionel diesels. You know, from time to time, it may become necessary to detach the truck from the engine. Sometimes you need to do maintenance or some lubrication or some wiring work if a wire comes loose. And you need to detach the truck from the engine. Now on most manufacturers' engines like MTH and Atlas, it's kind of a pain because you undo this one screw that detaches the truck from the motor. And that's easy enough, but then getting it back on is a little bit of a pain and takes some work. But Lionel has made it really easy. If you want to take off the truck on these diesels, all you do is turn it to 90 degrees, and it pops right off, just like that. And then there's a little Molex connector, and it's that's it. It's off. And then if you want to reconnect it, it's just as easy. You just reconnect the little wire plug, like that. Turn it to 90 degrees, put it in the slot, and it's back on. Pretty neat. And again, that's not just for this diesel, that's for almost all modern Lionel diesels made in the last five or six years. Now let's talk about the detailing on this engine. This is probably not the most detailed O-scale diesel I've ever seen. An MTH Premier Line diesel would probably have a little more detail. An Atlas Master Series diesel would certainly have much more intricate detailing, but it's not bad. It's a good job. It's solid. It's not perfect. It's not the worst I've ever seen. It's right in the middle. It's a good, solid-looking engine. It looks great, and the sound and the features and the performance far outweigh any lack of details you might find. So where an Atlas Master Series diesel might be a 10 as far as details are concerned, in my opinion, an MTH Premier Line diesel might be a 7 or an 8. This is probably a 6 or a 7. It's good, it's not the best I've seen, but it's good, it's solid, and again, like I said, the sound and the features and the performance far outweigh any lack of details you might find. But let's take a closer look. The paint job on this engine is perfect. All of the lines are crisp and clean. All of the warning placards are legible, so as far as paint goes, they did a great job. Let's take a look at the bottom of the engine. The pilot is nicely done. Not the most detailed pilot I've ever seen. There are no drainage holes in the steps and there's no cup or cut bar. But you do have separately applied MU hoses behind the plow. So it's not the most detailed plow I've ever seen, but it's good. And the same can be said for the truck side frames. They're nicely detailed. Not the best I've ever seen, but not the worst. They're right there in the middle. They're solid. The fuel tank detailing, again, right there in the middle. I've seen better, I've seen worse. They did a good job. You've got some hand-painted details right here. So overall, it looks good. The body of the engine is also nicely detailed. We've got separately applied grab irons on the front side and rear of the engine. There are two figures inside the cab. The windows of the cab have separately applied windshield wipers. One of the concessions to details is that on the sides of the windows, the windscreens are cast into the body of the engine. They're not separately applied like they might be on an MTH or Atlas engine. It'd be nice if they were separately applied, but it's not a deal breaker. They still look fine. All around the engine, we've got safety tread on the walkways. We've got metal handrails and then a safety chain on the front and rear of the engine. 
The sides and top of the engine feature some nice cast-in details. The radiator screens are not see-through like they would be on some other high-end O-scale engines, but they are deeply recessed enough so that they still look pretty good. Up on top, we've got a nice separately applied horn. Here's the smokestack with the smoke unit inside. To load the smoke unit, you just put smoke fluid right down the stack. We've got four fans up on top, and each of those fans has separately applied fan blades. And then towards the rear of the engine, we've got separately applied lift rings and grab irons. The lighting on the engine is pretty well done. You've got a light in the cab. You've got a headlight up here and one in the back. You've got illuminated number boards on the front and rear of the engine. And you've got operating ditch lights on the front of the engine. The controls for the engine are located on the underside on either side of the front truck. On this side, you've got the run program switch, the smoke on off switch, and the volume knob. And on this side, you've got the Odyssey speed control on off switch. Now the fact that the controls are on the underside of the engine, to me, indicates that this is probably an older tooling. Because on Lionel diesels with newer toolings, the controls are usually accessed from the top of the engine. They usually have a removable section that allows you to easily access the controls as well as the battery compartment. But on some of these older toolings, the controls are on the underside and to get access to the battery, you actually have to take the shell off of the engine. That's not a bad thing, it's just an older tooling. It's been in circulation for a while and that would probably explain why there's a little less detailing on this engine in comparison to some of the newer toolings that Lionel uses for their other diesels. As far as the raw stats for the engine, the overall length is right around 18 and a half inches, coupler to coupler. The weight is 4 pounds 13 ounces. It's got right around 1 pound 12 ounces of pulling power, and the minimum curve it'll take is 031. Now when this engine was offered in the 2010 Volume 1 catalog, the road number was 8301, and then in the 2010 Volume 2 catalog, they offered an additional road number, 8302. So that way you can get two of these things and have a nice double header. Okay, now I'm going to start this up and let you hear some of the sounds for a minute, but I'm not going to run it around the layout quite yet. I'm going to turn my attention next to the crane and boom cars, and then at the end of the video, we'll run all of these items around the layout together. Dispatcher here. Do you copy? Over. Roger that. Please start her up and stand by for track orders. Copy that, dispatcher. Starting up the engine. Out. Okay, here's the horn. And the bell. There's some of the crew talk. Can I get a green light? Over. Yes, you are good to go. Over. Copy, we have that clear. Out. Dispatcher here. You are clear to pull. Over. Thanks, dispatcher. Cleared outbound. Out. One of my favorite sound effects on these legacy engines is the labored engine effect. If you're looking at the legacy menu this is the main menu and if you hit the speed button you go to the speed menu and you've got this little graph right here that represents the labored engine effect and you can raise it and lower it with these arrow buttons here so when I raise it up I don't know if you can hear it on the video but it gets this really throaty bassy sound of the engine sounds great it's one of my favorite things about these legacy engines Okay, and then finally, here's the shutdown sequence. See you next trip. Sign it off. Out. Okay, that wraps it up for the SD60 for the time being. Now we're going to set it aside for a few minutes and take a look at the Burlington Northern Command Control Crane and Boom Cars. So here we have the crane car and the boom car, and as I said at the beginning of this video, these were offered in the 2010 Volume 1 Lionel catalog, along with the SD60 that you just saw. Now this is not a new item for Lionel, they've been making the command controlled crane and boom cars for quite a while now, but this is the first time I've bought one, and I gotta say, this thing is loads of fun, definitely one of the best operating accessories that Lionel has ever made. 
The way this works is that the crane car is where all the action's at. Using the Legacy or the TMCC remote, you have full control over the crane's operations. You can turn the crane around 360 degrees. You can raise and lower either of these hooks. You can raise or lower the boom. You can turn the lights on the crane on and off. And you can deploy the outriggers. That's really cool. I'll show you that in a few minutes. Now the boom car, obviously one of the functions is to have a little compartment into which you can deposit materials with the crane, but the main function of the boom car is to provide the sound effects for the crane. In the cabin, you've got a speaker and a soundboard, and when you program the crane into the Legacy or TMCC remote, you assign the boom car the same ID as the crane, and that way when you start up the crane, this thing starts up with the sound effects, and it sounds really cool, and it plays different sound effects depending on what you're doing. So if you're rotating the crane or lowering the hooks or firing the outriggers, it plays the appropriate sound for that action. It's really cool, and you're going to love seeing this thing in action in just a few minutes. Before I start this up, though, let's take a closer look at each one of these cars, starting with the crane car. When you take the crane out of the box, the first thing you're going to notice is that it's much heavier than you might think. And that's because this thing is almost entirely made of metal. The only plastic things that I can find, really, are the outriggers, the window inserts, and the headlight lenses. Other than that, it's pretty much all die-cast metal, so it has a great weight, which is important when you're trying to pick up heavy items on your layout. You want a lot of weight so that the crane doesn't topple over, and the fact that it's made entirely of metal gives it that weight. Starting at the bottom, we've got die-cast metal trucks, a die-cast metal body with lots of nice rivet detail, separately applied grab irons and ladders everywhere, a separately applied coupler cut bar, and we've got lift rings on both sides of the crane. And on both sides, we've got an electrocoupler that you can fire from the Legacy or TMCC remote. Up on top, the cab is also very nicely done. As I said, it's all die-cast metal. The paint job is flawless. You've got lots of great rivet detail all over the place, and you've got lots of separately applied grab irons and ladders. On the back here, you've got a light right here, and there are two lights on the front. You'll get a better view of those in just a minute. And up on top, we've got a little smokestack. Now, unfortunately, this does not have an operating smoke unit, and the reason for that is quite simple. With all the motors and electronics that are crammed into this cab, there's just no room for a smoke unit. There are three opening doors on the cab. If you open this one right here, it reveals the run program switch, which you need to program the crane into your legacy or TMCC remote. On the other side of the cab, we've got two more doors. This door here opens up just like the one on the other side, but there's nothing behind it. It's just there for fun. Now, this big door, when you open it up, it reveals some gears and a little lever. That lever is used to engage or disengage the gears on the crane. And what that's all about is that when the crane is being shipped or is going to be in storage, you want to disengage the gears so that they don't get damaged while it's being shipped or in storage. It may sound complicated, but it's really not. If you want to find out more about it, just read the instructions that come with the crane. On the back of the cab, you've got two little slots, one right here and one right here. And into those slots go what are called cab locking pins. And Lionel gives you two of these pins. They look like this. And you slide the pin into the slot and into these little eyes here, and it locks the cab in place, just like on the prototype. Now, obviously, you don't want to have the pins in place if you're going to be rotating the cab. And in the instructions, Lionel emphasizes that the pins are just there for aesthetic purposes, but it is a nice touch. Here's a look at the boom and the pulleys. The boom is all die-cast metal, just like the rest of the crane. And you've got these great support lattice structures going up and down the boom that look really cool. Lots of nice rivet detail. Both of these hooks are die-cast metal. And with the use of string and pulleys, you can raise and lower these hooks as well as raise and lower the boom using the Legacy or the TMCC remote. The last thing I want to talk about before we move on to the boom car are all of these strings right here. These are all attached to pulleys and then they go down into the motors and they allow you to raise and lower the boom and raise and lower the hooks. And they all feed down into the cab through this opening. This little plate hinges up like that. And then down in here you have all the motors and gears. There are four motors down here. One allows you to rotate the cab, one allows you to raise and lower the boom, and the other two allow you to raise and lower these hooks. And these strings are what make it all possible. Now a word of warning is to always make sure that you maintain tension on these strings. Because if you were to turn the car over for some reason or pick it up or move it and 
you lose tension on the strings, they will come off the pulleys and get tangled up, and then it's a nightmare getting them back to the way they need to be. Now, in the instruction manual, they give you a diagram that helps you reset the strings in the event they come undone, but it is a royal pain in the butt. It happened to me once, and it took me about an hour and a half to get the strings back to the way they needed to be. So do yourself a favor. If you find that you're going to have to pick up the crane car or move it or turn it upside down for any reason, make sure that you do it in a way that maintains tension on the strings. Okay, last but not least, let's take a look at the boom car. As I said before, the main function of the boom car is to provide the sound effects for the crane. But the boom car is not required to operate the crane. The crane will operate just fine on its own. But if you want to have any sound effects with it, you need the boom car. And remember, like I said earlier, these are separate sale items. So when you buy the crane, it doesn't come with the boom car. You have to buy the boom car separately. Why Lionel does that, I don't know. I think from time to time they have sold them together as a package. But in this case, they are separate sale items. So you have to buy each one on its own. But in my opinion, if you're going to buy the crane car, you really need to buy the boom car too because the crane car is fun by itself, but it's a whole lot more fun with the sound effects. Just like the crane car, the boom car is very well built. It's not all die cast metal, but it's still very solid. You've got die cast sprung trucks down here, a die cast metal body, separately applied grab irons and ladders all over the place. Up here in the bay, these two sides are detachable. And then the floor, believe it or not, is made out of real wood. How cool is that? The sound hardware is located in the cabin on the boom car. To access it, all you do is lift up the roof like that. And the roof is held down with magnets. And inside, you'll find the soundboard, the speaker, the battery compartment, and the run program switch. Now, the way it works is that on the crane, when you put the crane into program mode, you also put the boom car in program mode at the same time and then you assign both the boom car and the crane the same ID on your legacy or TMCC remote. And that way, when you activate them, they will work together. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the crane. I'm going to use it without sound for a minute just to show you how to use the controls and to also demonstrate that you can use the crane without the boom car. But then we'll crank up the sounds and we'll have a little fun with this. Here's my legacy remote, and I've got the crane pulled up. And you'll see there's a bunch of buttons here. These three buttons up top, the first one is for the boom, the second one is for the big hook, the third one's for the little hook. We've got some lighting controls here. This button here fires the outriggers. This activates the crew talk sequence, and then you've got sound off and sound on and a reset button. Now you rotate the crane using the throttle wheel. You can rotate it 360 degrees in either direction. And then with the boost and brake button, you raise and lower the hooks and the boom. So, for example, watch this. If I turn the throttle wheel, the crane turns. If I select one of the hooks, and then I push down, the big hook goes down. Push up, and the big hook goes up. Same thing with the boom. I'll press the boom. There goes the boom. Down and up. Same thing for the little hook there. So that's a lot of fun, but it's a whole lot more fun with the sounds. So let's go ahead and turn the sounds on. I'm going to press the little sound button right here and it should crank up. And there we go. Okay, now that the sound is on, if I operate the crane, you'll hear the appropriate sound for whatever it is I'm doing. So if I lower the hook, for example, give it a listen. Or if I rotate the cab, give it a listen. In addition to the operational sound effects, you've also got a horn. There is no bell, 
Now, these sound effects are fun, and the operational sound effects are a lot of fun, but the real fun comes when you turn on the crew talk sequence. On the Legacy Remote, I'm going to hit this crew talk button right here, and then watch what happens. All right, let's get to work. Ready when you are, boss. Big hook. Okay. Big hook ready to go. Cable down. And it plays the appropriate crew talk dialogue for whatever you're doing. Good job. So let's do the boom now. Move the boom. You got it, bud. Ready to move the boom. Boom is going down. All right, let's hold it there. And if you rotate the cab, it also does the appropriate crew talk. The key to rotating the cab is to be nice and smooth about it. Don't go too fast. If you just go nice and smooth, you can get a nice, smooth action on the cab rotation. And this is an example of what I meant when I said it turns 360 degrees. It'll turn all the way around. Pretty neat. The last two things I want to show you are the lights and the outriggers. The lights are controlled from the Legacy or TMCC remote. You can turn off the front lights, like that. And you can also turn off the rear lights. And now, finally, let's take a look at these outriggers. This is really cool. If you're not familiar with what an outrigger is, on a real crane, in order to keep the crane from toppling over when they're lifting something heavy, they'll have extensions that come out from the crane and then they'll put boards up under those extensions to balance the crane so that it doesn't topple over. Well, this has the same thing. It has a sound effect too when you deploy the outriggers. Check it out. Pretty neat. And there's three on the other side as well. And then under the outriggers are where you would put the pile of boards and Lionel provides you those piles. They give you two sizes. There's a small and a large, like that. And depending on what size track you have, you can use either one of these. Now, on my track, since it's custom ballasted, it's gonna be a little tricky, but basically what you would do is stick it under there like that. And you would do the same for this one and this one and the three on the other side. And that would give you some balance so that the crane doesn't topple over when it's trying to lift something heavy. Pretty neat. Now, to put the outriggers back in, those don't go back in automatically. You have to push them in like that. But they go in really easily. But the outriggers are really cool and they're kind of like the icing on the cake. Let's see it one more time. Pretty cool. Okay, now comes the fun part. Let's see if we can do some real work on our layout. I've got the outriggers deployed so that the crane doesn't topple over, and I've got the hooks attached to this car that's derailed. Let's see if we can re-rail the car. Okay, little hook. You got it, boss. Raise the load. Twice. Big hook. You got it, boss. Okay, little hook. Down. Okay, good job. That's far enough. And there we go. The car has been re-railed. Pretty fun. And of course, if you don't want to re-rail cars, you can always just do standard crane stuff like picking up assorted objects on your layout, like this wheel set.
Okay, now let's go ahead and shut her down. So that about wraps it up for this review. These are three great items from Lionel. They're a lot of fun, and I'm really happy to have them on my layout. Now, if you're looking at purchasing these items, the SD60 retails for right around $500, the Crane Car retails for around $340, and the Boom Car goes for about $220. Now, those are retail prices. If you go through a good Lionel dealer, you can probably get them for a little cheaper. And speaking of good Lionel dealers, if you're looking to get these items or any other O-Scale items, Check out our sponsor for today's video, which is Legacy Station. You can get to them on the web at www.legacystation.com or give them a call at 770-339-7780. So now I'm going to end this video by powering the train up and running it around the layout for a minute. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time. Dispatcher here. Do you copy? Over. Roger that. Please start up and stand by. Copy that, dispatcher. Starting up the engine. Out.